Hi, this is Engineer Richard T. Earnhardt. I'm going to discuss solution to some engineering board problems. Let's start with a problem in algebra. Determine the sum of the valued solution to the simultaneous equations. x, y equals 15, y, z equals 35, and z, x equals 21. And then we have the following choices. Okay, so from, from x, y equals 15, I can solve for x in terms of y. Okay. And from y, z equals 35, I can... Um, solve for C in terms of Y. And we substitute X and Z in the third equation. Okay, so we obtain okay, for C X equals 21. So we replace A by 35 over Y. And then our X, 15 over Y. And in the right hand side, we have 21. And solving for, okay, uh, we have Y squared here. Uh -huh, 35 times 15 over 21 so this will be plus or minus uh, 5 but we, we only take the positive value okay because we're only after uh, for the sum no, of the positive valued functions and knowing y equals 5 we can now solve for x so 15 over 5 will be 3 and for z here z will be 35 over 5 you know, which is 7 so therefore x plus y plus C is equal to 15. So the answer here is letter A. The polynomial x cubed plus 4x squared minus 3x plus 8 is divided by x minus 5. Then the remainder would be Okay, so we have the following choices. Note that when the polynomial P of X is divided by X minus R, the remainder would be equal to P of R. So, the divisor is X minus 5. And the divisor is in the form um, x minus r from the remainder theorem. Then we will take r to be positive 5. And then we compute the remainder will be equal to p of 5. Which is obtained by replacing x by 5. So we have 5 cubed plus 4, 5 squared, okay. minus 3 times 5, plus 8. And computing, we get, okay, 218. So, therefore, this is letter B. 
the resistance of a wire varies directly with its length and inversely with its area. So if a certain piece of wire 10 meters long and 0.10 centimeter in diameter has a resistance of 100 ohms, what will be the resistance if it's uniformly stretched no? so that the length would be uh, 12 meters? Okay, so let's say we use L for the length and then the area we use letter A. The resistance is letter R. So therefore your R is directly proportional to L and inversely proportional to A. Now uh, we're given that if L is 10, the diameter is 0.1 centimeter, the resistance will be 100, 100 ohms. Now, take note that this is the wire is uniformly stretched, no? so meaning the, the area is uniform or shall we say constant so if this is constant then we can solve for k over a which is so k over a will be r over l okay so r is um 100 then the length is 10, so this will be 10, okay, uh, ohms per meter. And what will be the resistance when the length is uh, 12 meters? Okay, so we have R, so K over A is 10, and then the length is 12 meters. So this is your K over A, and this is our length. So we have 120 ohms. Okay. So therefore the answer here is letter D. A sitting section in a certain uh, stadium has 30 seats in the first row, 32 seats in the second row, 34 seats in the third row, and so on, until the 10th row is reached, after which there are 10 rows each containing 50 seats. So find the total number of seats in the section. Okay, so in, in arithmetic progression, the nth number is equal to the first number A1 plus n minus 1 multiplied by D, where D is the, the difference no? uh, in the arithmetic progression. And then the sum of the arithmetic pro progression is given by n over 2 times the sum of the first number and then the nth number. Now take note that uh, for the first ten rows, no, the number, uh, the number of seats form an a repeating progression. So we have here uh, thirty, followed by thirty-two, thirty-four, and so on up to the. Uh, tenth row okay which is let's say a sub 10 so we'll take this as our a sub 1 so if this is an arithmetic progression okay the difference is 2 okay and we 
can solve for the tenth. Okay, the tenth uh, number. So that will be a one is thirty. Plus we have ten minus one multiplied by two. So solving for a ten, we have forty eight. Okay, and then we can now uh, compute for the sum of the uh, seats no, for the 10 rows, for the first 10 rows. So we have the sum is equal to using this formula. Okay, so we have 10 over 2. Okay, the first is 30, and then the 10th row. Has forty eight six. And the sum is equal to three hundred ninety. Now, after which ten rows each containing fifty seats, so therefore the total would be three hundred ninety plus. times 10 so that will be 890 so the answer here should be letter B now let's have number 5 gravity causes a body to fall 16.1 feet in the first second 48.3 feet in the second second 80.5 feet in the third second and so on. How far did the body fall during the 10th second? So we have the following choices. Okay. Um, note that the given numbers no form an arithmetic progression. So we can check you know, for the a difference between two two succeeding numbers. So let's start with sixteen point one. Okay, followed by forty eight point three, eighty point five, and then and so on. Take note that your D here, as you can see is 48.3 minus 16.1 which is the same as 80.5 minus 48.3 and that is 32.2 okay and therefore the numbers form for the series form an arithmetic progression how far did the body fall during the 10 seconds? No? So we're asked to solve for a sub 10 here using this formula. Okay, so the first number is 16.1 plus uh, 10 minus 1 multiplied by the difference which is 32.2. Okay, so... That would be 305.9 feet. Okay. So the answer here must be letter A. The third term of a harmonic progression is 15 and the ninth term is 6. So find the 11th term. So note that the reciprocals of the terms no, in a harmonic progression no, form an arithmetic progression. Okay, so for the harmonic progression, okay, our third is third number is fifteen, and then your ninth term or number is 6 
Now we get the arithmetic progression. So A3 is 1 over 15. And the ninth term is 1 over 6. And this form an arithmetic progression of the, the reciprocal. Okay. So, we'll be using AN is equal to A1 plus N minus 1 multiplied by D. Okay. So, for the first number here, when N is equal to 3, okay, we have uh, 1 over 15 okay, equals A1 plus 3 minus 1 multiplied by D. And then when N is equal to 9, we have 1 over 6 equals A1 plus 6 minus 1 multiplied by D. So we have two equations here, okay, uh, with two unknowns, A1 and then D. So solving uh, for the two equations simultaneously, so we should expect to get, okay, D, 1 over 60. And then the first number to be 1 over 30, okay. And take note that we're asked to get uh, A sub or the 11th term. Okay, so we have 1 over 30 here plus 11 minus 1 multiplied by 1 over 60. And okay, so this is 1 over 5. This is from the arithmetic progression. Now, for the harmonic progression, okay, the 11th term should be the recipro recipro reciprocal, now, which is 5. So, this must be the answer. And you should choose for number 6, letter C. Okay, let's have the problem number 7. Find the sum of the... E Infinite geometric progression, 6, negative 2, 2 thirds. And note that in, a, in an infinite uh, geometric progression, or when r is, oh, r is the ratio of the arithmetic progression, then r should be from negative 1 to positive 1. Then the sum should be a1, over 1 minus 1. So take note if the if the ratio is outside of this interval, the sum would be infinite. Okay. So for the arithmetic progression, we have 6, negative 2, 2 thirds. Uh, is, if the ratio is negative 2 over 6, that should be equal also to 2 thirds divided by negative 2, which is negative 1 third. Okay. So if the we're asked to get the sum, so this is A1 over 1 minus R, the first number is. Uh, 6 and then 1 minus negative 1 over 3 and that should be equal to 9 over 2 okay so we should take letter A if one third of the air in a tank is removed by its stroke of an air pump what uh, fractional part of the total air is removed in six strokes. Okay, so these are the choices. So in an arithmetic 
or rather geometric progression, a n is equal to r raised to n minus 1 multiplied by a1. R is the ratio, a1 is the first number, a, a sub n is the nth number in the geometric progression. Okay, so uh, let x be the amount of air. remain in the tank. So we have starting with X. So if one third will be removed, then the remaining amount will be two third two thirds multiplied by x and then if another one third will be removed then we have 4 over 9x for and so on and take note that this forms a geometric also forms a geometric progression with r equals uh, two thirds okay so, 4, 4 over 9 divided by 2 thirds no, is 2 thirds. 2 thirds divided by 1 is also 2 thirds. So, to compute for uh, if that will be uh, 6 strokes. We will take this as our A1. We need to get, okay, so from, from A1, that, 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 uh -huh. A6. And th this will be considered a six stroke. Just the first stroke will be. I uh, will start in A2. So therefore, we compute for the seventh term using the formula. Using this formula. So we have uh, two, 2 over 3 raised to n minus 1. That will be 7 minus 1 multiplied by x which is your a1 and this is 0 0.087a x and what we're asked here is the amount of air removed after six strokes so, uh, or after a sub 7 so that will be 1 minus 0 0.0878, okay, so that will be, you can remove this one, but we just after the ratio, no? uh, which is 0 0.9122, so the answer is letter D. One pipe can fill a tank in six hours, and another pipe can fill the same tank in three hours. A drain pipe can empty the tank in 24 hours. So with all three pipes open, how long will it take to fill the tank? Okay, so these are our choices. Okay, so... We have three tanks, let's, uh, three tanks A, B, C, and then with the corresponding weight. So if the first tank, let's say, uh, first tank A 
no? uh, can fill the tank in 6 hours, so the rate will be 1 over, 1 over 6. And then, the second tank, uh, 3 hours, so that the rate will be 1 third. The drain pipe can empty the tank in 24 hours. So the rate will be 1 over 24, but take note that this uh, uh, empty or rather the third pipe you know, has a negative uh, effect. Okay, so we put a negative sign here. Okay, with all three pipes open, how long will it take to fill in the tank? So the sum of the rate should multiplied by if uh, let's say x denotes uh, the number of hours the number of hours to fill the tank okay so therefore the sum of the rates multiplied by x should be equal to 1, no? 1 work done. And then solving for x here will be 24 over L, which is 2.18 hours. Okay, so the answer here is letter A. A man is 41 years old and his son is 9. So in how many years will the father be 3 times as old as his son? So we have the man and the son. And these are the present ages of so 41. Okay, the son is 9. Okay, let's consider T years from the present their ages will be 41 plus t and then 9 plus t and after this uh, t years no the fa father will be the age of the father will be three times the age of the sun. Sorry, this is plus t. And then solving for t here will give you 7. Okay. So that will be letter D. How many kilograms of cream containing 25% butter fat should be added to 50 kilograms of milk containing 1% butter fat to produce milk containing 2% butter fat. Okay, so we have the following choices. So we have 25% butter fat here. which is unknown or has an uh, unknown number of kilograms and then one percent butter fat uh, which is 50 kilograms and That will produce a 2% butter fat. Now, the total amount, you know, if this is the product that will be, or the final uh, mixture, then the total weight should be uh, 50 plus X, you know, or X plus 50. Okay, and then we, uh, we get... Uh, material balance on the butter fat so okay we get the following so 0.25 x 
plus 0 0.0150 plus or that should be equal to 0 0.02 multiplied by x plus 50 okay so so we can now solve for x uh -huh. so which is uh, 2.174 kilograms okay so the, the answer is letter A pipe A can fill a tank in 4 hours pipe B can fill it in 9 hours less than the time it takes pipe C which is a drain pipe not to empty the tank so when all three pipes are open it takes two hours to fill the tank so how much time in hours is required for pipe C to empty the tank if pipes A and B are closed okay so we have three pipes Okay, so let's say pipes A, B, and C. C is the drain pipe. And then, uh, pipe A can fill the tank in 4 hours, so the rate here is 1 over 4. Now, C is a no, so we let it be X. A, uh, sorry, so that would be the number of, X would be the number of hours uh, for pipe C to empty the tank. So the rate will be 1 over 1 over X. And then for uh, pipe C, 9 hours less, so that will be uh, 9 minus X, and the rate will be 1 over 9 minus X. So the sum of the rates, so 1 for plus 1 over 9 minus x plus 1 over x no, the sum of the rate multiplied by 2 r's should give you 1 work done okay. so okay, solving for x no? will give you x over 12 so the answer here is also letter A a plane takes 5 hours to fly westward from point A to point B and 4 and 1 over 11 hours to return from point B to point A if the wind velocity is 50 kilometers per hour from the west on both trips, what is the airspeed of the plane? So, airspeed is the speed of the plane in still air. Okay. So, let's say from A to B. Okay, so this is the direction. The time it takes is uh, 5 hours. And then going back you know, from B to A, the time is 4 and 1 over 11 or 44 plus 1 is 45 over 11, okay? Now, note that the travel time will be longer no, if the plane travels against the wind. So, if the wind velocity is 50, the KPH KPH 
then the velocity from from a to b will be uh, v plus 50 if v is the airspeed of the plane and then the velocity from b to a is v minus It should be V minus 50, and then this should be V plus 50. Now, the distance from B to A is the same as the distance from A to B. So, knowing that the distance is equal to the velocity multiplied by the time. So this will be uh, V minus 50 multiplied by 5 hours and then V plus 50 okay, multiplied by uh, 45 over 11. Okay, and then solving for V here will, uh, will give you 500 kph. So the answer for problem number 13 is letter B. Find the coefficient of x to the 8 in the expression of uh, x squared plus 1 over x quantity raised to the power 10. And we have uh, the following choices. In a binomial series, uh, a raised to r term. Or the AR term will contain the following. You know? So this is a combination N, combination taken N minus R at a time, A raised to R, and B raised to N minus R. Okay, so your n here is 10. From the binomial x squared plus, note that uh, 1 over x is x raised to negative 1. So both a and b contains the letter x. And the constant will uh, come from uh, this combination no? formula. So we'll take a raised to r, or rather a as your x squared, and then b is x minus 1. So using this formula, Okay, so x squared raised to r and then x raised to minus 1 um, raised to n minus r eh, rather 10 minus r that should be equal to x raised to negative 8 we want to find the uh, 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 rather positive 8. We want to find the coefficient of x x raised to 8. And equating the constant or the rather the power you now will give you r plus 
n minus r uh, we have ah uh, you have negative 1 here no negative 1 so times negative 1 equals positive 8 okay and this will give you the value of r which is 6 okay so we can check so this is 12 uh, 4 minus 4 so 12 minus 4 is 8 okay and therefore uh, the coefficient of x raised to 8 will be n n minus r so that will be 10 and 10 minus 6 or 10 combination taken 4 okay, which is 210 no, from your calculator so ans the answer here is letter, letter B Okay, let's continue with problem 15. So, solve the inequality. Uh, in solving for the inequality, we, we always simplify the equation so that the right-hand side will always be, on the right-hand side of the inequality should always be zero. So, we transpose the one on the right-hand side to the left-hand side. So, negative 2 over x plus 2 less than or equal to 0 and then simplify so x minus 3 times x plus 2 uh, 3 times x plus 2 minus 2 times x minus 3 this is 3x minus 2x so that will be x for 6 plus 6 x plus 12 and then we have your x minus 3 okay, x minus uh, x plus 2 rather so the solution is okay so if this is less than or equal then either the solution is negative or equal to zero okay equal to zero okay so x plus 12 is equal to zero will give you x equals negative 12 so this will give you zero so therefore this should be one of the solutions no? and x minus 3 is equal to 0 so that gives you x equals 3 okay so since it is in the denominator so x x equals 3 is not a solution okay also x plus 2 so equals 0 so or x equals negative 2 Okay, so we have negative 12 is a solution, negative 2, and positive 3. So these are the critical values. Okay, um, we try to substitute, so with, within this interval, let's say uh, we choose negative 13 substitute here so negative 13 plus 12 will be negative oh, we get the quotient here okay the sign of the quotient so negative over negative 12 uh, 13 minus 3 so negative uh, negative 13 plus 2 is negative so you get a negative sign here okay so we should uh, include no in our solution set now from negative 12 to negative 2 let's say negative 3 so negative 3 plus 12 will be positive 
just pick any number within the interval no? so positive uh, negative 3 so this is negative also negative so we have a positive value here and then from negative 2 to 3 is zero, uh, let's say 0 we pick 0 so we have positive here uh, negative if x is 0 uh, 0 so positive so this is negative okay and let's say 4 4 so positive here positive positive so this is positive so the solution set okay will be from okay uh, from negative infinity to negative 12 closed no? union with uh, open negative 2 to positive 3 open okay or this is equivalent to uh, this one is from negative infinity so this is from negative infinity to negative 12 okay including 12 negative 12 this is from negative 2 to 3 open and so this is the inequality negative 2 to positive 3 so therefore the answer is letter a okay now we go to problem number 16 sine a is negative 4 over 5 sine b is 7 over 25 so what is sine a plus b if a is in the third quadrant and b is in the second quadrant okay uh, so let's have two solution here i sorry okay solution so solution number one so we will use sign sign a plus b which is equal to sine a cosine b plus sin cos cos a cos a sine b now uh, if so if a is in the third quadrant okay so we draw your terminal axis in the third quadrant so this is your angle a uh, this is the hypotenuse opposite no the opposite is negative 4 and if you have uh, uh, 4 and 5 no as the sides then the third side will be 5 squared minus absolute value of four, or negative 4, so 4 squared is 3. So this is a sp actually a special triangle, no? so three with sides 3, 4, 5. But this one is negative, so we'll take this as, because this is in the negative x-axis, so the sign must be negative, or the angle is in the third quadrant, so your x must be negative. And for letter... Letter B, that is in the second quadrant, this is your angle B. Okay, we have 7. Oh, uh, for the third side, okay, for the third side, that will be square root of uh, 25 squared minus 7 squared. Okay, so I'll compute first. So we have 25 squared minus 7 squared. So that will be 24. 
But since it is in the second quadrant, the sign must be negative. But y here is positive. Okay. So, we're going to use this formula. Okay, so we just substitute your sign A is even, negative 4 over 5. Your cos, uh, cosine B is negative 24 over 25. Um, cosine. And cosine A, cosine A is negative 3 over 5. So plus negative 3 over 5. And then sine B is even 7 over 25. Okay, so let's see. Compute. Uh, we have 4 times 24 plus 3 times uh, 7. Uh, that will be negative. minus and 5 times 25 and so we'll give you 3 over 5 okay so if you know the formula but actually you can compute this directly you know but if let's say if you're going to solve if sine a is negative 4 over 5 you can solve for a just get the arc sign you know? also arc sign so let's say arc sign um, arc sign of negative 4 over 5 is negative 53.13 but note that this is in the third quadrant your a is in the third quadrant so Okay, uh, that this should be 180 degrees plus absolute value of this. Okay, that is 233. 233.13. And if uh, sign B is 7 over 25, okay, get, get the arc arc sign which is uh, 16.26 but the angle is in the uh, second quadrant no? so how do you get the angle in the second quadrant if this is the terminal side so that will be 180 degrees minus uh, 16.26 degrees okay. so 180 minus 16.26 will give you 163 okay 163.74 degrees okay so therefore we have sine of a plus b so you can compute this directly from your calculator no so sine of uh, 233.13 plus 163.74 degrees around 0 0.6 no? which is uh, 3 over 5 okay so the answer here is letter B okay let's solve number 17 so solve 
Angle A of an oblique triangle with vertices A, B, C. If A is 25, B equals 16. And C equals 94 degree, degrees and 6 minutes. Okay, so let's have... A, B, C. So let's say triangle, not drawn in scale. Huh? A, B, C. C. Uh, A is 25. B is 16 and this one is 94 degrees 6 minutes we start by solving uh, we want to find the angle angle A okay. so we start with Solving for C, no, using cosine law. So, C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared minus 2AB. Cosine C. Okay. So, this is 25 squared plus 16 squared minus okay, twice 25 times 16 four times cosine of the angle 94 degrees 6 minutes Okay, so solving for C, we should get 30.63. And by sine law, we can now solve for A. So 25 over sine A should be equal to... 30.63 over sine 94 degrees 6 minutes no? and A you should get A as 54 degrees and 30 minutes so the answer here must be letter D